Good evening, this is Pastor John, and it's my honor and privilege to bring you tonight's small group teaching entitled, How to Let the Peace of Jesus Rule in Your Heart. How to Let the Peace of Jesus Rule in Your Heart, and that's a direct uh, quote from Colossians 3.15, How to Let the Peace of Jesus Rule in Your Heart. You know, when I think of, of peace in the heart, I think of, you know, being the genius that I am, I think of inner peace, peace in the heart. And when I think of inner peace, I think of that movie Kung Fu Panda and I think of Master Shifu. Uh, he was all about inner peace and he was trying to teach his student Po, the chosen one that was going to save the valley from the horrible villain Tai Lung. And Master Shifu kept telling Po, you need inner peace. Uh, po, you're going to need inner peace. What was funny is Master Shifu was having a hard time getting it himself. But I think of that every time I think of inner peace. And so I want to just take a few minutes to talk about inner peace, how to let the peace of Jesus rule in your heart. When I, uh, I think back on my own story, what, what is inner peace? I think about my own story. When I was in my middle teens, uh, I was away from God, I was away from Jesus. Life was horrible. I did not have inner peace, nor did I have outer peace. Um, it, so we can say, you know, people people talk at this time of the year as we go into the holidays, they talk about external peace, peace on earth, you know, goodwill toward men, uh, no wars, no fighting, no disease, no strife, That's that's wonderful. I would call that external peace or circumstantial peace. And if I was gonna try to be funny, uh, if inner peace is shifu, I'll call outer peace tofu, uh, just to try to, you know, have a little fun tonight. And if you got no peace, you got Roku, Roku and Hulu. Yeah. Now I've got a, I've got a bit of an audience tonight, and so if you hear some uh, chuckles, that's because they broke protocol <laughs> and they they laughed. Uh, but so anyway, here I am. I'm I'm around 15, 16, and life is horrible, and I turn back to Jesus. And I started to experience this thing on the inside of me. Something had changed and I, it was inner peace. I had a peace. The Bible talks about a peace that passes all understanding. And I had this peace that really I had never had anything quite like that before. I had had facets of peace before, um, but I had this inner peace and I knew everything was different. And there was a few things the Lord showed me. He said, and we would, in Bible talk, we would say repentance. There was some repentance I had to do. And I knew I had to, I had to do some things, repent to maintain that inner peace. And so I did those things. And then I went back to school the next year and I knew something had changed. And what's, what's funny is, as I took my inner peace, my shifu, <laughs> my inner peace back to school, uh, my grades started improving because I had horrible grades. Something on the outside started changing. My grades started changing. And then I was played sports and I started excelling in sports. That's an external thing, but it started changing. And then I, my girlfriend talked me into going to choir. Oh, by the way, the miracle was I had a girlfriend because I didn't have one <laughs> those years when I had no peace. And now I've got a girlfriend. And, and she talked me into doing choir and I excelled and got some honors in choir. And then she talked me into being in the play and I'd never done anything like that before. And I got to wear tights uh, in the play, Kiss Me Kate. And my girlfriend's name was Krista and she was Kate and I was Kiss Me. And uh, all these things started happening on the outside of me. And what I began to see was the internal peace was bringing an external change. Uh, because the Romans 14, 17 says, the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking. In other words, the kingdom of God is not external, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is internal. It's, it's inward, changing the outward. And that's what I begin to see in my own life. So that's, that's what I have learned uh, is inner peace. Now two, how do you get inner peace? Well, now I'm going to read Isaiah 9, Two six through seven. This is our this is our key verses as we go into the holiday season, and you've I'm sure you've heard this before. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born. That child, of course, is Jesus. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God everlasting father here it is prince of peace 
He had a lot of names, but one of those names is he's the Prince of Peace. Verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. By the way, that's if you don't know, that's that's a song. I've got that song going through my head right now. But in verse 7, it said, of the increase of his peace, there will be no end. This Jesus, this Prince of Peace, has an eternal, everlasting peace. So I think of a little, I think of a little anecdote here. If um, if I need a resource such as water or food or money, and I don't have any, and there's a there's a person or a king or a prince that has what I need, um, <laughs> this is this is rocket science. If if I need what they have. If I need what the Prince of Peace has, here's, here's what to do. Get a relationship with that person. If they've got the resources I need, and then ask them for it. Well, you develop a relationship with the Prince of Peace, with Jesus. You know, become born again, get to know him, um, and then ask him for whatever it is you need. I needed peace, and the Prince of Peace gave that to me. And he'll give that to you. He'll, he'll give you whatever resource you need. And the great thing is, there's a never-ending supply. And I began to learn that early. I began to learn that um, this peace, what, what was different with me was I knew this was different. And I, would have, I was going to do anything I had to do to maintain that peace because I had had facets of peace before, but it never stayed. And this was 1980, 43 years ago. And I've had that peace now for 43 years, that Prince of Peace, that everlasting supply. So tonight, as I wrap it up, I want to leave you with, if you don't have Shifu, <laughs> if you don't have inner peace, there is a Prince of Peace. Get to know him. If you don't know him, get to know him and ask him for peace and he will. Ask Jesus for peace and, and get your small group to, to pray with you if you need that. And you'll begin to experience a peace that surpasses all understanding and it will stay. Just walk with him, obey him, do anything he asks you to do. You know, it's, it's kind of like when you get married and you, you value your spouse and you want that marriage to last, you'll do anything you have to do to, to guard and protect that relationship. Well, guard your relationship with Jesus and the Prince of Peace and that, that, prince, that peace, that inner peace will stay. It's been good to be with you tonight. Um, there are some questions you can discuss. Hope you guys have a great night. Bye-bye.